um, it's uh, just a relief to just to relax for a minute, just to let yourself off the hook from needing to describe everything that's going on, work everything out, think about everything, analyze everything, understand exactly what everything means, and just relax for a short moment. Such a relief just to allow yourself to be exactly as you are. And that sense of relief that you feel is the demonstration of the benefit of relying on open intelligence. And this is not complicated. This is not something that you need to think about. And um, it's... <laughs> I, yeah, my, my, I've shared this before, but my approach was uh, very an analytical and intellectual and rational and that's the way I'd been trained to use my mind um, to approach things logically and to try and understand everything by thinking about it a lot. And um, when I was introduced to this training, uh, of course, that was the way I approached this training, was to try and understand using my rational mind what was being stated to try and understand everything that was said in the talk. Now I can just enjoy the music. <laughs> and um, it was really frustrating for me when I came to these talks and there was something here that was interesting, you know, you know education in the nature of mind. I'm interested in that and I, I'd like to know more. And I'd come to these talks and um, you know, there'd be this interesting topic and the, the talk would start and my head would just start to nod. And it was just so frustrating. I was like, you know, I have, I've come here to listen to this talk, I've got to stay awake. And, and then my eyelids would start to droop and, and um, it was really interesting to see that what was happening there was that I was really just allowing myself to relax. Just to relax with everything. And we've been trained to focus in on all of the data. And data is a term that we can use to, to describe anything in our experience, any thought, emotion, sensation, anything at all that we can describe, we can just call data. And the way that I'd been trained to use my mind was to focus in on the data, to really emphasize the data, to, to do something with it. And um, so all we're doing here is now retraining ourselves to see that we can relax and allow the data just to flow on by. Allow it to be whatever it is. And this is the self-love that was mentioned previously. Because trying to manage the data, so for example when you're feeling tired, trying to stay awake, desperately trying to stay awake is such hard work. And you probably all know that, you know, when all you want to do is go to sleep, trying to stay awake, it's just this huge struggle. But this is the same with all data, with all experience. As soon as we try and change it, as soon as we wish it was somehow other than how it is, then the struggle begins. And this is really the end of self-love. Because self-love is allowing ourselves to be exactly how we are with whatever we are feeling. Now, my experience is, is that the, the data, that the descriptions, are completely uncontrollable. So, um, I woke up at about half past seven and um, it's about half past ten now, so a little bit more than three hours I've been awake. And I can look back on those three hours and I've had all kinds of thoughts and experiences and emotions. Um, so well, let, let's just see, I mean, how, how many people so far today in the three or four hours you've been awake you know, have, have felt lonely? How many people have felt that? How many people in the three or four hours you've been awake have had some kind of physical pain or sensation in the body that's really seemed troubling? How many people woke up and felt really sleepy and like it was difficult to get up? <laughs> And it's like, this is just so normal. All of these things are completely normal. And there is nothing wrong with feeling any of these sensations. And the only way that we can discover that for ourselves 
is by allowing them to be as they are for a short moment and relying on open intelligence. What's open intelligence, you ask? I can hear you all asking. To recognize open intelligence, you just need to stop thinking for a moment. <coughs> just for a brief moment. Allow yourself to relax right here and now. And there's an intelligence, there's an alertness that is naturally present. And when you stop thinking for a moment, you just allow yourself to notice that it's there. <coughs> So the simple instruction in the Balance View training is to take short moments of allowing everything to be as it is. All of your data, whatever they're saying, I'm awake, I'm asleep, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm well, I'm ill. Whatever the description is, allow it to be as it is and recognize that it's shining forth from open intelligence. Inseparable, like the breeze is inseparable from the air. You wouldn't know one without the other. Data and open intelligence. Completely inseparable. And when you have this instinctive recognition with one datum, then you begin to see that you have the capacity to repeat this recognition in all kinds of situations. And this is vital. Because you need to gain certainty that this is the case. It's great to have this as an intellectual understanding, but the instruction here isn't to take short moments of thinking about open intelligence. The instruction here isn't to take short moments about thinking about short moments. The instruction is to take a short moment of just relaxing your mind and your body wherever you are, whatever you're doing. <coughs> now when I began to do this, the results were, were, were quite profound because I began to see that I could be relaxed and at ease with whatever was going on. And this was not what I was told. This was not the way that I had been trained. I'd been told that there were certain situations where it was okay to relax. But there were other situations where I should be tense. I needed to be worried. I needed to be concerned. Now in India, there's a whole range of experience for you to test this on. You have no idea what's going to happen in the next moment. You have, certainly have no idea what's going to happen when you walk out of this center. But this is brilliant because you have so many opportunities to test out for yourself and to see the truth in what is being suggested here. Is open intelligence naturally present at all times? Is everything you're experiencing experienced in, of, as and through open intelligence? And you can test this out for yourself in short moments of just relaxing and allowing the data to be however they are. Now I was fascinated by this. Finally, here was something that I could check out for myself and, to di and discover what was fundamental in my own experience. What was the nature of my mind? What was it really like? Because I'd read so many books, I'd heard so many beautiful things said about it, and yet this beauty and this wonder of existence that people talked about just wasn't my experience. No matter how many books I read, no matter how many beautiful quotes I saw online or incredible things I heard about life, I still woke up some mornings and I felt miserable and I felt depressed and I had a stomach ache, and I had a headache. So surely this was evidence of there being something deeply wrong with me, of me having some fundamental flaw. I shouldn't be feeling depressed. I'm in India, I'm on the beach. You know, it's beautiful here, and yet I still woke up and I felt depressed some mornings. And that did not make sense to me. So with all my rational analytical training, I was left completely confused because it did not make sense logically. Now when I began to relax for a short moment with something like depression or a headache, that was really interesting because I could see for myself that the headache or the thought of depression was only known in, of, as and through open intelligence. 
it was also a datum shining forth in exactly the same way as when I was feeling happy. And the reason I knew that was because I took a short moment when I was feeling happy too. So this was a tool that I could apply in all situations to become more and more familiar with exactly what was actually really going on for me in my life. What was really the nature of my mind, not what I'd read in books, not what other people had told me, but discovering for myself very directly and instinctively recognizing that my mind was completely wide open and clear like a cloudless sky. None of the data ever affected this openness. And the more I relied on this completely wide open, clear mind that was always expanding and opening, the clearer I saw everything that was going on. And I saw that I did not need to behave as if I was a victim to any of these passing data anymore. And that is self-love. I see that I have a choice. And at the beginning that choice seemed very challenging at times. So it was confusing. Well, I've got a headache now. You know, okay, right, I can take a short moment. I can recognize that this headache is shining forth from open intelligence. But am I allowed to take medicine or not? You know, is that included? And, and those kinds of questions, really practical questions, are brilliant. But to come and ask for support with something like that is perfect. Because we can try and sit and work that out and the headache just gets worse and worse. And, of course, medicine is included. So it's great if you've got a headache or physical pain or stomachache, take short moments all throughout that process and recognize everything around that experience, every description, every sensation in the body is data shining forth from open intelligence. And then take an ibuprofen or an aspirin or whatever you like and continue to take short moments. One of the things that I found so beautiful when I came to this training to hear was that everything about me was already perfect for me to recognize myself and recognize the fundamental nature of mind. So nothing needed to change. I, I was convinced all these things about me needed to change before I could recognize open intelligence. Absolutely convinced. So um, certain thoughts that I had, you know, the um, thoughts about, nasty thoughts about other people, I definitely couldn't have those. Somehow I thought that the nasty thoughts about myself, it hadn't occurred to me that there was anything wrong with those, they seemed so normal. <laughs> Um, I had to stop the bad habits that I had. That was absolutely, I was certain of that. I had to stop um, smoking, for example, before I could recognize open intelligence. That was obvious to me. But again, that is not the instruction here. The instruction is to take short moments with whatever you are doing, wherever you are. Take short moments when you're smoking and take short moments when you're not smoking. Take short moments with the cravings to act on an urge. Take short moments when you're indulging that. And take short moments with the guilt that arises afterwards. <laughs> All of them shining forth equally from open intelligence. And when I began to see that, then the perspective shifted. The perspective w opened out into this wide view and defining myself with all of these really limiting labels just relaxed again and again. And to recognize that I was this intelligence that was completely wide open, always expanding. And as I relied on that intelligence, my capacity to make really clear decisions about what was going to be of most benefit just continued to increase in a completely effortless way, not struggling with my data, not trying to be something that I wasn't allowing myself to be exactly as I was, one short moment at a time. Really getting to know myself with everything about me. All of the thoughts that I was ashamed of, all of the things that I felt that I was embarrassed about feeling. The thoughts that, you know, I don't fit in, I'm isolated, I'm lonely. Allowing those to be as they are too. What a relief! This is self-love, this is true kindness, and this is something that I'm so, so grateful for, to see that I can allow myself to be exactly as I am. 
This is the, the greatest gift that I've ever received.